Hey everyone, welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler, and today I'm gonna to begin a series on some practice problems for the GED math test. And I'm gonna cover a few different categories that are actually shown on the GED website as the four main categories of questions you're gonna see on the test. And we're gonna start with basic math. As we go through this series, we're also gonna cover geometry, we're gonna cover basic algebra, and we're also gonna cover graphs and functions. So let's start with part one of basic math and get right to problems. So these are some of the questions that you're gonna see the basic math section on the non-calculator part of the GED math test, which is really your first part. It's a few questions and you just can't use a calculator, unfortunately. So um, it's good to practice these problems to become more familiar and so you can get better at them and get quicker at them. So let's look at two examples right here. We have one that says determine the least common multiple of six and eight. And so, obviously to help understand you know, how to solve this problem, you need to know what the least common multiple is. And so a multiple of a number is basically, you know, you're, you're counting by that number. So like for sixes, you're counting by sixes. You have six, 12, 18, 24, so on, so on, so on. And for eight, you have eight, 16, 24, 32, et cetera, et cetera. And you need to find the two of those that are the same, but the smallest between the two. So I usually will just write out the multiples. <clears throat> So for 6, I have 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, and so on. And for 8, I have, let's see, 8, I have 16, I have 24, 32, and so on, so on. <clears throat> and between those, I need to find which one are the same and, you know, which one of those is, you know, the smallest that they both share. And so you can see for, let's do blue, for six you have a 24 right here, you also have a 24 right here, there's none before that, which means 24 has to be the least common multiple between six and eight. So that is gonna be our answer, 24. All right, now in a similar question you have the greatest common factor between 24 and 30. And so, Factors are numbers that divide into our numbers. So the numbers that divide into 24, the numbers that divide into 30. And so I do the same thing. I like to just kind of list them out to see which one um, is the greatest. And so for 24, the factors are one, which is a factor of everything. Let's see, two goes into it, three goes into it, four, uh, six is there, three times eight, two times 12, and one times 24. So those are all the factors. So for 30, we're going to do the same thing. We have 1, of course. 2 divides into 30. 3 divides into 30. Uh, let's see, 4 doesn't. 5 does. 6 goes into it. 7, 8, 9, 10. That works. Um, let's see, uh, 12, 15 will work. And 30. And really, one of the ways you can do it is just kind of go down a list. The other one is you can kind of match them up by pairs. So for example, 1 times 30 is there, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, etc. So you kind of match them up, you'll cover them all. And so for this, I need to find the one that is the greatest between the two of them. And so, you know, obviously they both share 1, both share 2, 3, but, you know, there's a bigger one out there and it actually ends up being 6. There's no other number factor that is bigger than 6 that they both share. So the greatest common factor is six. Okay, so those are just some examples of problems you may see. Let's look at a couple of others. Exponents. Exponents, I see these a lot on practice problems with um, GED math, and really it comes down to, do you know the rule to apply for these problems? They're very simple if you know the rule. Um, so let's go through a couple of them. If you have a number like three or anything like that that has an exponent, if you're multiplying them together, as long as your base number, which is basically, you know, the number I've underlined there, is the same, and you're multiplying them together, all you have to do is add the exponents together. So this is really 3 to the 4 plus 5, which is 3 to the 9th. And there's your answer. You don't actually have to figure out what that number is. It's super big, but this is going to be your answer. Now the reverse of that with division, so with multiplication, you add the exponents, and so since division is the opposite of multiplication, you do the opposite of adding the exponents, which is subtracting the exponents. So this is really ten or 2 to the 10th minus 7, 
which is 2 to the third. And that's your answer, 2 to the third. Now, with problems like the bottom one, where you have something in parentheses raised to another exponent, what you actually have to do is you take and multiply the exponents together. So 4 to the second to the third is really 4 to the second times third, which is 4 to the sixth. So this is just some of those little tricks that you can see to solve these. Um, I know these problems have been on tests before. I've seen them in practice problems all over the place. So it's really good to learn these rules because um, they're very quick. So I hope this helps when you get to these kind of problems on the uh, non-calculator part of your test for basic math. Uh, be sure to check out part two of the series where I go through some other examples for basic math and then check out the videos in the future for other examples with geometry, basic algebra, and graphs and functions. And thanks for watching. Hey everyone, it's Brian, your host of Math Talk. I just want to thank everyone for watching my videos on YouTube and following me on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You know, if you feel like after watching these videos, you still need the better classroom setting or 101, and you live in the Palm Beach County area, come visit our website at www.geds.com. Come check out the different locations that we have and find one that suits you best, that's closest to where you are, and you can come take classes. Thanks for watching.